Now, I like difficult drinks, and I like the people that drink them. And the esteemed cocktail authority, William Grimes, said that if the mark of a great cocktail is the amount of rules it has and the amount of debate it generates, then the mint julep shades the dry martini in the title for America's preeminent cocktail. And the mint julep is uniquely American. But there's a misunderstanding about it. A mint julep is actually a tautology. A julep is any spirit or liqueur or, in fact, alcoholic substance sweetened, fragranced with mint, and then served on ice. So you could have a sherry julep, a champagne julep, a gin julep, a rum julep. When we talk about a mint julep, and what I'm going to make today is actually a bourbon julep. The julep is, predates the word cocktail by a good 200 years. Milton talked about julep. Samuel Pepys in the 1660s talked about julep. But in those days, it was just sweetened and minted, minted alcohol. From the Arabic word julep, meaning, in fact, rose water. And it's a very simple drink, but has so many different variations and styles. So firstly, the vessel you serve it from. Some people would serve it in a silver cup, others in a glass. Today, I'm going to do it in a glass because that's more likely to have what you have in your bar. Nextly, of course, the mint. How do you add the mint? Some people merely rub the mint around on the inside of the glass. Some people pulverize it into small bits. Some people make the bourbon and the sugar, add the ice, and then put the mint sprays all over the top so that you have to bury your nose in it and the mint comes through in the fragrance. I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to put the mint in the bottom of the glass. Now I'm going to sweeten it. Powdered sugar or liquid sugar? Powdered sugar may be more traditional, but liquid sugar, of course, is going to dissolve in the whole drink and sweeten the whole drink. You can always add more. You can't take it away. Now, the more you crush mint, the more bitter it becomes. So really, what we're looking to do is to just bruise this slightly, infuse it in with the sugar so that when the liquid hits it, it'll sweeten the whole drink. So we're just literally just pressing it down just to start the infusion process with the sugar water in the bottom, but not to get any of that bruising and that bitterness that you may get if you use the more violent method. Then the next stage, ice. Crushed ice is best because this is quite a large vessel. So we're only going to be putting bourbon in here or whatever liqueur we're using. So crushed ice. This made it a very aristocratic drink because in the deep south, where the mint julep was associated, ice was only available in the grand plantations or the fine houses. So use lots of ice. Whether it's crushed, whether it's cracked, whether it's shaved, these are all arguments that people who love mint juleps get very particular about. We're just using a simple crushed ice today. Then, of course, the liquid. H.L. Mencken said a man who would put rye in a mint julep would put scorpions in a baby's bed. That's the level of passion that this gener drink generates. I'm going to use a good quality bourbon, Maker's Mark, a wheated bourbon, unique because in its mash bill, its recipe of grains, it has no rye at all. It has wheat, so it's a softer flavor that I think will work quite nicely in this drink. Large measure in there, add a little bit more to it, and then just stir it around gently. Just obviously, just so that the flavor can get infused, but still has that lovely eye appeal that we had from before. Finally, the garnish. You put straws in this in Georgia, and basically you're making some sort of insinuation about the drinker's sexuality, or so they say. I'm going to put straws in there because I'm not in Georgia. Then, obviously, we want to get the nose involved. So let's use a good sprig of fresh mint, and with any drink that you're garnishing with mint, put the mint as close to the straws as possible so that when you bend down, the nose gets involved. And for all of those people who always wondered why a julep strainer, one of these, as opposed to the coarse or daisy or hawthorn strainer, is called a julep strainer, in the olden days when this was popular, people's dental hygiene wasn't as good as it was today. They regularly had particularly sensitive teeth. So the mint julep strainer would just sit over the top, and when drinking it, you would drink like that. With the straws, we negate that, but that's where the julep strainer comes from, the mint julep, a truly classic cocktail and one misunderstood by many people. Spirit, sweetened, made aromatic with mint and served on ice, the mint julep.